Are you struggling right now? Being an artist is challenging, isn't it? You face unique difficulties that not artists just don't understand. Well, my friend, you're not alone. Welcome to Art Mentor, my name is Sean, and today we're going to discuss the most common issues that all artists face so that you can deal with them and move along in a healthy way. Because listen, I have encountered every single one of these, and this is how you're gonna get through it by doing this. Now, the first thing that I learned how to do that really helped to shape my life as a professional artist is that I had to learn how to think outside of my own wallet. And this is the toughest thing for so many artists. And what that also boxes us into is minimum wage thinking. And breaking free of that was really tough for me because I felt like all of the conditions were just set up against me. And that had to do with the way that I worked, the way that I thought, the way that I priced myself, but also the way that we as artists view our value, our value economically, but also our value humanistically. And that's a really tough thing for you to break out of. All of that fear, it sets in and then it puts limited expectations on what you think you're able to do and where you think you're able to go or how much you think you're gonna be able to earn. And what that all does though, what does that all mean? It just starts to give you permission to fail. It starts to allow you to have a reference point of saying, well, hey, they were right or I was wrong or you know what, I should have listened to them. But y'all, breaking free of this and standing on your own two feet is literally one of the most important things that you'll ever do in your life and you're gonna be so ridiculously proud of yourself because I think you deserve that, don't you? And here's another way that most of you need to break free of thinking is that some of y'all might be thinking to yourself, well, man, there's just no way I can charge that much or like, I don't think I'm worth that much. But listen, just because you wouldn't pay it doesn't mean someone else in the world won't. Listen, y'all, there are 8 billion people on planet Earth. Somebody will appreciate you, even if others don't. The biggest issue here is that you have to grow out of your poverty mindset. You have to learn how do you combat all of that. You have to learn why you're going to bring amazing stuff into this world. You're gonna bring beautiful things into this world by being an artist and you're gonna have so much value and your contributions are gonna be amazing and you're gonna enrich people's lives. But you need to remember that. And the only way you're gonna do that, friend, is getting out of this poverty style of thinking where you can only do so little. Because if you think that way, guess what you're gonna do? Only little things. And you've got big plans, don't you? Now, let me tell you why I've seen more artists crash rather than soar, but I avoided it. And I think about this best when I used to go ahead and I started doing commissions. And I used to see what people were doing. I used to see what people were charging. I used to see what people wouldn't do. And the one thing that I always notice is people saying no to themselves. They would say, no, I can't do this. Or no, I can't charge that. Or no, I'm not gonna be able to make it with this one. And y'all, here's one major question I need to ask you. Where did you learn that? Who taught you that? Because y'all, you weren't just born thinking like this. You weren't born doubting yourself. A toddler does not doubt themselves. They just do whatever the heck they want. You were conditioned to think what you could do and what you couldn't do. And the major reason why you think that you can do something or you can't do something all boils down to this one thing. You don't have a metric to measure yourself. And what that starts to create for you is called imposter syndrome, where you feel like you don't belong and you feel like you can't do this thing. And you feel like you are not ever going to be a part of this. Or even if you're in the middle of a great project or you're in the middle of an awesome art career, you just feel like you're not worthy, but it's just because you were conditioned because somebody put that in your head because somebody else's voice is still ruminating, kicking around inside that organic bucket called your brain, okay? The way that you combat that though, is that you're gonna feel better once you have a reference point. Like if you're trying to get sales on your artwork, as soon as you start getting sales, you're gonna be like, oh cool, well, hey, somebody will buy my artwork. Or you start to get clients and say, oh cool, well, hey, I guess I am worthy. Now I wanna to propose to you a really radical way for how you wanna get through imposter syndrome. And it's just real simple, y'all. You need to confront it, face it, and you need to work through it by starting to act like the person that you envision yourself being. Too many times do we try and level up ourselves as an artist by acting like the person that we used to be. And I used to do this too. I used to only operate under what I was currently doing, thinking that that would bring me to being the artist that I wanted to be. But then no friend, I learned this. You have to start to operate like the person that you would love yourself to be, the person that you envision yourself being in 10 years from right now. Because I still get this every once in a while. I still get this when people buy my artwork. I 
still get this when clients commission me. I still get this too, like when I work with my mentees and when I look at my YouTube settings and I see what people are enjoying. And I just always have this moment of intense reflection where I'm just like, wow, I am like so ridiculously grateful for this. And when you start to practice it like that, you are going to release your imposter syndrome and you're going to step into the amazing world that you were born to be. So let me give you some confessions as a slow artist, okay? Because tell me if this is you down below. Have you ever tried to do speed paints? Have you ever tried to time yourself and you just realize that you're going so slow? Have you ever looked at your artwork at the end of it and you're just like, oh my God, I took all this time and that's all I got done. Oh, well, listen, I've been there too, friend. And here's what I learned. I learned that there's no such thing as wasted time. And there are so many of us that are so focused on growing your speed and doing things more efficiently and doing things the way that other people tell us to do at the frequency that somebody tells us to do it, okay? But y'all, here's what you wanna focus on instead. You wanna focus on building your skill. You wanna focus instead on learning and adapting to the things that you wanna do. You wanna focus on throwing yourselves into some challenges and into some pits to fight some things that you've never fought before. And I've thought about this big time with my clients, with my updates that I send them too. Sometimes it's worth it for you to take another day and to just let them know, hey, I know I told you I would have the update today, but instead I'm gonna have it tomorrow because I wanna deliver you the best possible product. Sometimes I think that I'm done with the product and I just go, mm, you know what? Uh, I wake up and I look at the next day and I'm just saying, I, I need to do a little bit more to this. And then I'll let them know, listen, no one's ever gonna be disappointed with a better quality product that took a little bit more time, as long as you aren't dragging it out in all honesty. Y'all, definitely prioritize your learning and your time into a project over the end product because Nobody ever says this, so I wanna be the first to tell you, but your speed is a byproduct of your prior experience, of your prior knowledge, of the things that you're challenging yourself to do. The more that you do, the faster you're gonna go. When I look at my speed paints from three years ago when I first started this channel versus now, they look awful to me, and I see loads of issues, and guess what? They took the same amount of time. So time is relative, and it's relative to your experience. You're never going to get better at being a better artist if you are solely focused on speed because then what are you going to do? You're just going to make the same mistakes faster. Is that what you want or do you want to get better? So can I tell you how being an only child actually stunted my growth as an artist? As weird as that sounds, here we go. So being an only child, you kind of just learn how to live and adapt based on what you want to do and you don't have anyone to talk to very much outside of your friends or school or stuff. So most of the time when you're alone, and uh, if you're an only child, tell me if this is you too. But you basically just kind of lone wolf it a lot, don't you? Basically, through being alone for a lot of my upbringing, from not having any siblings and not being too close to a lot of my family, I developed a lot of self-reliance. I developed the ability to look inward a lot too. And uh, you kind of just learn to rely on yourself. And that sounds like a good thing, but it's not all the time, especially when it comes to artwork, because you're kind of only developing a dialogue with yourself. And I see a lot of artistic hermits out there that are just doing that same exact thing under a different set of circumstances. So here's the reason why you're not progressing as much or as fast as you would like to. It's because you have a debt to pay off. And that is the debt of ignorance. Ignorance is the debt that you have to pay off in order to get to the next level. And friend, I just wanna let you know this, you're not gonna get there yourself. You need to get in with people that are going to help progress you to that next level. You need to get with people that are above your level. You need to get with people at your level too. You need to surround yourself with people that think similarly to you, that can build you up. And I wish that I did this sooner because I would have been so much better, so much earlier, if I just got in with great communities. And when you hear successful stories of successful artists, this is very often a common trait is that they have a great friend group. So what I definitely want to encourage you on is not to lone wolf it, but instead seek lots of feedback. You can do this a lot of different ways. Find any type of group online on any platform that you like. Hey, listen, I've got my own Discord server right down below. Definitely go ahead and check that out. It's free to join. Lots of really great, amazing people just like you there, and you'd be a great community addition to it. And then two, I also do one-on-one -on -one mentorships. So if you want to get in with my program, definitely check out the link below for that too. Because listen, there are loads of people in this world that wants you to succeed. Unfortunately though, there's a lot of people that would probably be intimidated by you. That's why you gotta get in with the community that believes in you. Now, if you're really ready to take your art to the next level, 
make sure that you hit that like and subscribe because I love putting out actionable content just like this one, just for you. So make sure that you do that. And then also make sure you're aware of this. Now, let me tell you why my addictions almost totally dissolved my passions. And I dealt with this a lot, and I've spoken about this in my previous videos, but I used to have a heavy video game addiction. And I remember like, and tell me if this is you down below, like you ever look at how much time you played games? Like for me, it was Dragon Age, and it was Elder Scrolls, and it was any number of games like Metal Gear Solid and stuff. And you would see literally the hours that you played right there. And you would think nothing of it, okay? And then I also started to take a look at too, uh, some other addictions that I had in my life. Like I've always kind of had a food addiction and like, believe it or not, uh, I used to be like 80 pounds on this current frame and that really affected me. And what I started to learn about is how much media consumption and then consumption was consuming my life. And that started to erode my passions because every single time that I wanted to sit down and draw every single time that I felt bad about seeing other people do more things than me at my age or younger than me. I always kind of look to what I was not doing instead and what I was putting my efforts towards. And then I would inevitably run right back to it. So y'all, here's one thing that I think we as artists need to be hyper aware of is how are you numbing yourself? Because there's a really romanticized image around the concept of how do we numb as a society and especially as artists. And listen, you can come up with any type of excuse that you want. Listen, I get it. Like you playing 150 hours of Fallout 4 is not research, okay? It's not you game developing, all right? I say that to you, by the way, with a smile on my face because I've said that too, okay? All you're doing in that is you are wasting your potential because you're not trying to get over a bad day. You're not trying to feel good. You are just numbing yourself so that you don't have to think about the things or perform the things that you want to do because you have certainty, because you have immediacy, because you know there's going to be a big payoff on that. Instead of that though, what I've learned is that instead of seeking the feeling of being full off of something else, you need to seek fulfillment. Have you ever thought of it like that? Have you ever looked through my DeviantArt account like way back when? Because you might not know this, but I used to be an anime artist. And I used to do this because, first up, I'm a huge anime nerd. I love anime. And I desperately wanted to get in there. And I wanted to, especially when I first got my first tablet, I desperately wanted to just get in with that style. My favorite artists used to do it too. And I thought to myself, as soon as I become digital artist, as soon as I get my first tablet, man, that's exactly what I'm going to do. And then this happened. I started to take a look at everything that I was doing and what I was producing. And I just thought to myself, you know, this isn't really what I want to do. And I started to take a look at how many other people were chasing that one particular dream that it didn't really align with them. And I'm not putting down anime artists because y'all are awesome and flipping amazing too. So that's not the moral of the story, hang in there. So what I started to learn about though, and I started to invest into instead was what am I actually really good at and what could I do and how could I serve people better with it? And I started to get more into semi-realism as soon as I figured out that that was a potential way for me to stylize my artwork. And then when you look around online, here's what you're gonna notice, and this is a really weird thing. Have you ever noticed how there's a lot of sameness in style? And whenever you go into any type of a job, like especially if you were to go into like concept art or illustration, there's a lot of sameness about it. And that's peculiar because if you actually ever go to art school, that's not what it's all about. Especially if you go to a non-trade based art school, like it's different if you're trying to get one that specifically prepares you for an industry, like Feng Zhu School of Design, you're gonna get in the concept art. But there's this push for a homogenization of style. Have you noticed that too? Like everybody is expected to paint like this. Everybody is expected to render like that. Everybody is expected to do lines like this. And y'all, there's definitely something to be said by having a structure and having some type of a guideline in place. And that's something that I personally teach in my classes and courses as well. But here's the problem with that, is that once you learn that, you're expected to then evolve it. But the issue is that there's so many people like you, tell me this is you down below, do you feel bad that you don't do it the same way that someone else does it? But then when you really take a look at it and you investigate it, who really takes off? Like, who are the artists that you really look up to? Because I'm gonna say this, they probably have a divergent art style, don't they? They probably have some uniqueness to it. And that used to be the focus if you went for traditional art education. It used to be about, okay, cool, don't make art like them. Make art like you. What's special about the way you do it? What's special about your process? So instead of you, 
focusing on what you can't do because that puts you in a mindset of lack, by the way, and that's not empowering. It's not gonna serve you either. Focus instead on what's gonna be special about you because that's how you're gonna to get to your next level. That's how you unlock it. Now, let me tell you what sets apart 97% of people from the 3% people that go crazy far. So there's this Harvard study I heard about, and it was a longitudinal study over a very long time. And what they did is they studied a select group of Harvard school graduates, and then they checked in with them dozens of years later, and they found this. The people who succeeded 97% more than the rest of their classes. What they found was that only 3% of people did this, is that they had clear and defined goals and they wrote them down versus the other 97%. And guess what? They were 90% more successful. And the thing that I think a lot of artists struggle with is that we follow our passion, great and all. However, though, you don't know where that passion is going to take you. It's kind of like if you just get in a car and you just drive somewhere and you expect to end up at a very certain place, guess what? You're gonna end up in a ditch or you're gonna drown in your car or you end up lost in the woods, okay? So what I wanna let you know is this, is that a failure to define your goals and direction for your life and for your art means that you are totally submissive to someone else's designs for your life. Is that really what you want? And what this starts to encompass is accountability. Ooh, such a gross topic, right? But no friend, I wanna empower you through this line of thinking instead, is that if you are able to go ahead and just assume the helm of your life, then you are gonna go so much farther than people that are just following their whims and they're just following whatever they think might be good at the time. Y'all gotta have some concrete metric to measure yourself against. And y'all, this reminds me of a conversation I had with my my mentees once and they asked me, Sean, uh, do I have a problem with accountability? No, accountability is something that we all have to face whether or not there is or there isn't. And accountability is just as friend as how well do you exploit the time that you have? So that is how you're gonna take off. That's how you're gonna succeed. That's how you're gonna accomplish the things that you wanna do. You see how that works? Because you have to be prepared to make goals or be prepared to fit into someone else's plans. All right, here's a really big bomb I wanna drop on you. And it's what I wanna tell you that no one else really discusses in the world of art and mental health, okay? Now, if you've watched my previous videos, you know that I've had my own struggles and I've had my own difficulties with it too. So I'm definitely not trying to give you some prophetic dialogue about how I'm just this guru that just isn't affected by it because that's not the case at all, okay? Just to set that tone for it, okay? Now, when you are dealing with mental health, okay, it's very important for you, obviously, to keep your spirits up high. And that's a big push for me to make the content like this that I do because I care about you, okay? But we have a lot of dialogue, a lot of rhetoric being spread around a lot about you taking a mental health day and taking a day off and treat yourself and all that stuff, right? And listen, that's all good because I just wanna nail this down. You need to take breaks every once in a while. You need to go ahead and do things that just serve your just basic being. You need to do things that are fun, okay? And you need to spend time with other people. You need to spend time doing things outside of art. It's super important. Totally understand that. All right, great. But listen, y'all, here's another portion of mental health that we don't talk about is that self-help also becomes self-indulgent way too often. And we romanticize that image of it way too often. And here's what I wanna say about that in the way that you're gonna avoid this. You have to set a guideline you have to set a timeline for yourself, in which case you're gonna give yourself that. So by all means, take a day, take a week, take a month. But y'all, define, okay, I'm going to take a break from here to here. Do that. Listen, when I'm on vacation with my family, I'm not bringing along my sketch pad and everything like that. I'm not doing commissions. I'm not responding to YouTube comments. I'm fully in that moment. I want you to be there too, okay? You need that for your soul as an artist too. So you need to definitely cater to that. But at the same time, you kind of stick with that a little too long sometimes. And I've been there too. I've given myself that excuse. And that's basically what it falls into is it starts to become an excuse for you to underachieve because you think that you just lingering in that moment is going to make you feel better. But in fact, what you need to do is focus on efforts towards what's called a compelling future. And that's when you're going to be constantly taking steps towards what you want to do with your life and what's going to make you happy. And the big thing that I want to draw you towards instead is this fact. The best thing that you can ever do for your mental health is develop yourself 
and your habits and your actions into the person and the lifestyle that you want to. Because you living in your current state is probably giving you really bad mental health, isn't it? So therefore, what do you have to lose by doing a little bit more, by challenging yourself just 1% every single day, by working towards that compelling future? That's how you're gonna blow past anything that you're currently feeling right now, my friend. And I'm telling you this because I've struggled with it before in the past, and that's how I've been able to move past it. Have you ever tried this before? Or how could you start to implement that, I wonder? Now, let me tell you why I used to fall in and out of art throughout my life and how I beat my own insecurities. So if you've been following my content for a while, you'll know I've definitely had my highs and lows, my ebbs and flows with art. I'm sure you have too, friend, right? Throughout my entire life, I've been watching artists fall off. I've been watching them give up. And I, that was always curious to me. I used to say, why? Why does that happen all the time, man? And then I realized that what they're doing is they're just redirecting their efforts. And they're redirecting their efforts towards what the priorities align to at that current moment in time. But I used to ask myself, how do I not do that? How do I not give this up? How do I not just succumb to that same exact mindset that everyone else is currently going towards, which is away from art? I want to oppose what everyone else is opposing. So the way I started to look at it was like this. Failure to train is failure to attain. Y'all, you have amazing flipping things that you want to do in your life. And you've got great things. And a lot of people don't understand that. But y'all, the number one thing you need to realize is that if you are not willing to put in that time and effort that most people can't even conceive of but it's so worthwhile for you, is that you're gonna develop a destiny for failure for your failure to train. So definitely put in those hours, grind that time out. It's gonna be so worth it. And if you do the things that I've been talking about throughout this video today, you are going to fly through it and you're gonna feel better through it and you're gonna have a more positive approach. It's gonna be more sustainable for you. And most importantly, you're gonna do exactly what you wanna do. Isn't that what you want? Because I want that for you too, man. Now you need to know that being ours is way more than a job, way more than a hobby, way more than activity. In fact, art is literally the way that I was able to save myself from my life, which I talk about all about for you in this video right here. Go check it out.